Little green men, little green men, little green men, little green men. They're in space, they're in space, they're called Kerbals. They're called Kerbals, they're in space, they're little green men. Hello again, gamers. Today I'm in another one of my favorite games of all time. You can see it, it's right there. It's Kerbal Space Program. Now, there's been a lot of sad news recently about KSP2, which was the sequel to this game. Uh, I'm not here to get in deep about that, but rather just to appreciate KSP1 for what it is. Because at the end of the day, I do believe that this game is still worth playing. So, uh, yeah, if you've never played Kerbal Space Program before, let me go ahead and walk you through some of the basics. I'm going to start a new file here uh, and I'll, I'll let you know uh, what makes this game so special to me so I'm just gonna create a new file here what are we gonna call it this will be spork spork space program and I'm just gonna do science mode with some default settings and uh, I'd recommend if you're playing this game for the first time just go ahead and do science mode uh, obviously you can do whatever you want you could do sandbox but it might be slightly overwhelming and go for the NASA flag of course all right science mode go so right away you're going to be introduced to Gene Kerman uh, and you get your whole space center right here and uh, you've got a couple different buildings to explore here they've also got shortcuts on the side on the left here as you can see most important ones you're gonna need uh, for science mode you're gonna need research and development this is where you're gonna be able to unlock new parts basically for your stuff and uh, I have some mods installed so well, a lot of these don't even have parts but you can hit leave facility up here in the corner to leave if you want but yeah we got the astronaut complex here's where you can hire Kerbals and uh, tracking station this is where you're gonna keep track of all of your flights all of your things in space basically and then you got the the vehicle assembly building where we're gonna build rockets uh, this stuff space plane and the runways for planes if you want to do that so here in the vehicle assembly building you're gonna want to start with a core piece for your spacecraft which would be a pod something that your Kerbals can sit inside or just later on when you get autonomous rockets you can do that too so I'll choose the Mark 1 command pod and when you first start you're not gonna have much unlocked so you might have pretty much just a f simple solid rocket booster and uh... but that's all we need for our first flight well almost all can't forget a parachute I'll be down here in your utility so grab a Mark 16 parachute slap that sucker on there and you're almost ready to go for your maiden voyage but since this is science mode you're gonna wanna grab some kind of science so go over to the science tab here and you should have the mystery goo containment unit unlocked I'll just slap two of those bad boys on there and let's see we can go over uh, from the build tab over here I can go to the crew and uh, we can see that we have Jeb assigned here good luck Jeb and then up here we can give our craft a name tin can of doom and then hit the green button for launch so now that we're here in the launch pad you can see I'm zooming in and out with the scroll wheel and uh, what you always want to do is just go ahead and activate SAS that is uh, what does that stand for stability system something stability system I'm sure someone can explain SAS better than me but it's basically just making sure that you're not going to topple over makes your flight more stable another way to activate that is just by pressing T so once you do that uh, you can do shift to throttle up and then control to throttle down and then uh, if you hit space you'll activate your next stage so over here you can activate your solid rocket booster this is our first stage you can see how much thrust it's going to provide now another thing that I frequently do is just press Z or X to instantly throttle all the way up or all the way down. Of course, one thing to note is that for solid rocket boosters like this one right here, uh, throttle actually doesn't even matter because once you light it, it just keeps going. So once you feel comfortable and ready, 
you don't even need to throttle up you can just hit space and here we go so up here at the top you can see this is our height in meters and uh, I have a flight engineer mod here to give me additional statistics if I need them down here next to your flight controls this is your velocity currently relative to the surface of Kerbin once you get into orbit it becomes your orbital velocity and uh, down here in the, this little purple one is very useful you can hit maneuver mode and you can see what your apoapsis is that's your highest point that you're gonna reach and uh, yeah I'm, I'm about to reach it and yep now I'm coming back down <laughs> so while I'm up here I can go ahead and run some science just observe that mystery goo uh, it jiggles and wobbles yeah that checks out uh, just keep that experiment you can even right click on your crew command pod and do a crew report and you can keep that experiment and the way that science works in this game is you have to do it in different environments for it to count as a new experiment so it'll give you diminishing returns if you just keep doing the same experiment in the same environment uh, luckily there's quite a lot of different biomes in this game like for instance flying high counts as a different biome than flying low or flying over a certain biome might count as different than being landed on it um, so this is a great time to talk about catastrophic failures so you can hit revert to launch or revert to vehicle assembly. Well, I just had a really bad premonition all of a sudden. Uh, I had this bad feeling that like I, I didn't play Kerbal Space Program in a really long time, and I forgot the importance of immediately opening your parachute. Uh, so yeah, if you get to too high of a velocity, you can't actually open your parachute anymore, and your curb is just basically doomed. Poor Jeb here would have been killed on our first flight. Luckily, we possess the ability to time warp. Speaking of time warp, up here in the top corner, you can uh, warp to times four speed if you want while wow, over the surface of Kerbin. Yeah, you can see the parachute actually has two stages of deployment. And now we're finally slow enough to land. Just like that. Uh, and this will actually count as another biome, so I can observe my other mystery goo. And finally, when you're ready to recover, you can just go up here and recover your vessel. So congratulations, you've done your first flight in science mode. Now it's time to go to R&D and unlock some new parts. So I'm gonna get basic rocketry and engineering 101. So now guys, uh, I'm gonna show you how to make a better tin can. <laughs> let's just call it, yeah, better tin can. Okay. So let's get rid of that old solid rocket booster. You can see now if I go to engines we have liquid fuel engines and fuel tanks. I have the procedural parts mod so that's why that's there but you should have this normal fuel tank. It's in vanilla KSP. So this is the most important bit of building rockets and it's about staging. So we need to add another stage to this. But before we do that, let's actually add a decoupler right here. Just slide it in between your command pod and your fuel tank and the decoupler is basically what blows apart the bits of the spacecraft so it'll separate this part from this part and the arrow shows what direction it's going to separate from so if you want to add another stage to your rocket you can basically just put another decoupler right down here and see it automatically builds a shroud for that engine and then let's say we just want to get a boost so just throw in a, a solid rocket booster like that and that can be our first stage uh, and I think now that your rocket's getting tall you're actually going to need to have some stability so I would recommend going to aerodynamics and getting some basic fins um, down here in the bottom left corner you can change your symmetry mode so I'd recommend quadruple or triple triple works too you can do it like this 
Another way to change your symmetry rapidly is by pressing X. And you should have unlocked the thermometer. That'll be useful for gaining additional science points. So before you launch any rocket, there's a couple of things you should probably check up on. So in the bottom right over here is your staging. So here you can see currently it is going in order from bottom up. So it's saying activate the solid rocket booster, then decouple. Okay, that sounds good. But then it wants to decouple the command pod, which would be catastrophic. So we need to make sure that this is all in order. Uh, for instance, while you, when you decouple this solid rocket booster, you should just automatically go ahead and fire up this next engine. There's a couple different statistics you might want to look at too, and you definitely don't need to. Uh, it might seem daunting or confusing, but it it's definitely doable. So down here, this little blue number, that's your delta V. Uh, you can see delta V for each stage here, and currently it's calculating that at an altitude of zero. And delta V is basically just a measure of how much thrust you can give this bad boy, essentially. And uh, having a lot of it is good. That's what you need to know. This little orange thing down here shows how much you have. Uh, and eventually you get to understand sort of how much you need to accomplish different goals. So you can also change your delta V2 vacuum. And you can see what it will be when you're out in space. That's super useful for planning space voyages. And then if you click on each stage here, you can see the thrust to weight ratio, that's TWR. And what you want to know is basically, is this higher than one? Because if it's not higher than one, this puppy isn't getting off the ground. <laughs> uh, and here you can see it's 2.4, so that's more than enough. Here, 3.6. Uh, if you have a really high thrust to weight ratio, then that's when you might want to throttle your engine down slightly. So with that being said, I think we're all good to go. Uh, hopefully nothing horrible happens. But if it does, it will be a learning experience. Okay, so here we are at the launch pad again. Um, one cool thing you can do is if you see, go to your Kerbal here, you can hit view and see what it looks like for your Kerbal. Oh, it's not nauseating. Uh, and if you want to get out of this view, just hit C. So again, I'm going to go ahead and enable SAS, um, thrust all the way up, out of habit, and uh, go ahead and launch this puppy. Best of luck, Jeb. This is your second voyage, and hopefully it won't be your last. So you can see how much solid fuel I have down here, and right when that reaches zero and runs out of solid fuel, I'm going to press space to activate the next stage. All right. You can see my cabin is about to, it's getting really hot right now, so I'm actually going to turn the throttle down slightly. Uh, and I turn the engine completely off, because you can see my apoapsis is 120 kilometers. That is actually reaching outer space, according to this game. So that should be mighty high enough, so let's just go ahead and skip forward slightly. This game considers 70,000 meters to be the actual mark of when you're in space. So now we're in space, guys, for the very first time. With the power of two stages. Uh, so let's go ahead and do our science. Get our crew report. And I believe, yeah, you can even EVA. So if you go to your Kerbal and you hit EVA, go EVA here. Then dang, it's called extravehicular activity, I believe. I do not recommend letting go. You do have a jetpack, but it's kind of sketchy uh, but yeah you can hit B to board you can also get an EVA report if you right click on your Kerbal and that's more science points and now I will actually let go you know what because now is a great time for me to just take a moment to look out there and just talk about why I love this game so much so if you've played Outer Wilds you know that that game's a masterpiece that can never be replicated. Well, I fell in love with how zero-g physics worked in that game and how it made you really feel like you're in space. And this game really just, I mean, it takes that to a level that is realistic, first of all. There's mods to make the solar system the size of the real solar system out there. 
and that shit is crazy it goes pretty hard though i mean i i've played it a little bit and i really enjoyed it but for me it was always just about the feeling you know what i mean the vibe of being in space is always just immaculate and it just becomes more so as you get further and further from your home planet accomplishing crazier missions you can go to jewel system there's there's like five moons of jewel or something like that and all of them are so different and beautiful this game shows you beauty at a at a genuine scale uh all right i gotta get back into this ship before i die wow this is cutting it close isn't it uh grab it board it oh we're in the atmosphere right now <laughs> okay So, I have a little bit of fuel left in the tank, but I don't even really need to fire it. But for shits and giggles, why not? So here on your SAS, you can hit retrograde, and that basically just means firing behind you. And uh, prograde, of course, is firing in front of you. So if I hit retrograde, it basically is slowing me down. You can see my velocity going down here. And that's just going to make my impact slightly less intense. And then I'm going to press space again and decouple. Uh, and that might have actually been a good idea because I realized I forgot the heat shield. But yeah, when you finally enter the denser parts of the atmosphere, it starts to slow you down enough where I should be able to activate the parachute. Right now it's red. Okay, and then when it turns white, then you can activate it. Wonderful. Pro tip, don't go EVA while you're going 200 meters per second in the atmosphere. Oh. That explosion was the other stage hitting <laughs> hitting the ground where uh, it appears there are some cities. So hopefully NASA has good uh, PR. Oh, and I forgot to take my temperatures. That's fine. I can do it here. So I can take a temperature when I land and a temperature when I'm in the air. All right. Just like that, we've landed. So when you're ready again, just go ahead and recover. Get all those sweet, sweet science points. Oh, I didn't forget a heat shield. I just didn't unlock it yet. So yeah, I would recommend getting survivability. This gives you heat shields, which allow you to enter atmospheres without burning up. Uh, that's pretty important. Yeah, I'm going to get some general rocketry as well. Why not? And stability. Let me know if you guys enjoyed that quick and dirty KSP video and if, and if you did I'll come back and do a tutorial on how to get into orbit or maybe even just a video on one of my builds, sort of Matt Lounge style. Anyway, that's all. Peace. Have a good day. Bye.